For this video, I'll be walking you through how to create a simple accessible drop down and share with you some nice CSS and JavaScript tips as well as accessibility on the web. I have here a div with class of dropdown, which inside I have a button with a class dropdown toggle and a UL list of class dropdown menu with five list items. The accessibility starts with HTML. So on the button, I added the area has pop-up attribute, which will tell screen readers that this will trigger a pop-up, in this case, the dropdown. On the menu, I added the role of list box. There's also a role of menu, which you use for menu bars. For this type of dropdown, you use list box. Each item has the role of option. This is intended to imitate the select tag dropdown, which I covered in a different video, link below. On the menu, I also added the area expanded to flag that this dropdown menu is expanded or not. For all items, I added the tab index of zero to force tab navigation to stop on each item. And we will be handling that in a little. On a CSS, I have a simple body style to center everything as you can see here on the right with the box size and border box for every tag. First, I'll start the dropdown, which I'll simply add the position relative since I'll be positioning the dropdown absolute to it and cursor of pointer. For the toggle button, I'll first remove the appearance, give it a purplish blue background, white text color, no border, 12 pixels of padding with 35 on the right so we can place the arrow icon there. Round the corners by three pixels, Position it relative so I can absolute position the arrow to it. Set max width of 300, remove the focus outline, then add the pointer cursor to it. I want to handle cases where the text is just too long and this is because I always want to keep a single line button label. So I hide the overflow and for the text overflow, I'll add ellipses. And for it to work, I'll set white space to no wrap. I'll make the max width 200 instead because 300 is just too big. Now I'll create our error indicator, so I'll attach an after pseudo element to the button. Empty content, border 6 pixels with 3 pixels radial, solid and transparent. I'll position it absolute to the button now and write 12 pixels to match the 12 pixels of padding everywhere else. Top 50% plus half of its size of 3 pixels, then shift it up 50% of its height. And to get the arrow, I'll set the color to inherit and you can see that it is a simple square of borders. Then I'll set all colors to transparent and then only set the top one to inherent. And like that, we get the arrow. If I inspect this, you can see that there are four triangle borders and I only set the top one to white. And I can set the bottom one instead to get the arrow up. Actually, I'll do that when the button has the class of active. I'll use Chrome class toggler to see the effect here, toggling it on and off. Now for the menu, I'll give it a white background and some semi-transparent black shadows. Remove it list items dot with list style none, five pixels padding top and bottom only, no margin, make it max width of 220 and is width to be 100% plus 25 pixels. So it hangs 12 pixels out on the left and the right side. Round this corner by three pixels, Z index stay to 10 so it stays on top of the other elements. I'll increase its max width to 320 instead. Then position it absolute left 50% and 80% from the top so it stays on top of the button, but not too much so it doesn't cover the text. Then translate in negative 50% to center align it with the button. I want to make sure the drop down is never too big, so I'll set a max height and overflow of auto so it scrolls when it has too many items. From start, it will be hidden and I'll use the visibility hidden. And when it's area expanded attribute is set to true, I'll show it. Now for each item, it will be 35 pixels tall, display flex so I convert it aligning text, give it 12 pixels left, right padding, also add ellipses to it. And in case text is too long, Now with it fully styled, let's handle everything else on the JavaScript side. I'll be using a constructor function to encapsulate everything for this, which I call dropdown, and it should get initialized with dropdown element like the one we just finished tiling. Inside of the structure, the toggle button and the menu from the dropdown element children, which I know the first is the toggle and the menu is the second. First, I'll set the element to be the dropdown element passed, then the value will be the toggle button text content. 
Then I'll create a toggle method which will do nothing for now. I'll go ahead and instantiate a new drop down with this and I'll pass a drop down element. And to test this, I log to the console the value, which will be the label of the button for now. Now this toggle method will take an optional flag to whether expand or not the menu, which will start with null. Inside I'll reassign it by check if it's null, meaning no flag was passed. And I'll check if the area expanded is not true, which will mean I should expand the menu. Otherwise I'll just use the flag that was passed. Then I'll just set the menu area expanded with the value passed. And similarly, if it is to expand the menu, I'll add a class of active to the button. Otherwise, I'll remove the active class. Now I can just go ahead and call toggle here. And like that, the drop down shows. And I can also pass true to indicate specifically that I want it to expand. This will let you control the drop down from the JavaScript side. Now let's handle when the user clicks on the drop down by adding a click event listener to the button and simply call toggle with no flag so it shows the menu if hidden and vice versa. With that, let's handle when the user clicks on the menu items, which I spread them in the array so I can have access to the for each method. For each, I'll set a click event listener, which will call the set value function and pass the item element itself. I'll extract the value, which will be the text content of the item. And you could also set a data value attribute if the value and the label differ, but this will do for now. Then I'll update the label for the button and the value of the dropdown in general. And I'll close the menu by calling toggle with false. Now, if I click on the menu items, the menu closes and the label of the button is updated automatically. Another cool thing it would be if from JavaScript, we get notified of the value change, just like we would with a select tag by listening to the change event. So on the element, I'll dispatch a change event. Then now I can just listen to the change event on a dropdown element and just print the dropdown value inside. And we see it's being printed in the console. Pretty cool. I also want to hide the menu on click out. So I'll listen to a click event on the document, which I'll call handle click out function. All it does is check if the dropdown element does not contain the event target and calls toggle with false. Now, to make this work with non-mouse or touch controls like the keyboard, I'll first make sure that when I expand the menu, I focus on the first item on the list by calling focus on it. And you can see now that the first item on the menu has a gray background to indicate focus as we set it on CSS. Also, when we select a value and close the menu, I want to switch focus to the button itself so you can trigger the menu again if necessary. Then I'll listen to a key down event on the toggle button and call handle toggler key down. There I'll prevent default and check for three keys only. The escape key to close the menu and the space or enter key to open the menu. I'll also listen to a key down event on each menu items, which I'll call the handle item key down function. Similarly, I'll check for the escape space bar and enter keys and also check for the up and down keys. So if they press up key and there is an item before the current item with focus, I'll focus on the previous element sibling. And do similarly to if they press the down key on the keyboard, focusing on the next element sibling. For when they press on the space bar or enter keys, I'll call set value instead. And like that, the drop down is complete. For more videos like this, like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.